Yo, what is up everybody, and welcome back to another Madden 20 online CFM game. We are now in week 10 of the 2020 season, that is year 2, week 10, and we finally have a chance to add an X Factor to the Miami Dolphins. It has been quite the rigorous rebuild since we inherited the 64 overall Dolphins at the start of this series. Now the Dolphins are a 79 overall, we have a couple of superstars, but no X Factor. Hopefully we can change that at the end of this game against the Los Angeles Rams. We have X who has an X Factor on the line and even though the man thinks he's Babe Ruth, we'll put that to the side and focus on the task at hand. If we want to get this X Factor, we either have to hold the Rams to under 100 yards passing, which will be pretty tough. We have to have X have the game of his life, getting interceptions and forced fumbles and all that good stuff. Or our most likely path to achieving this task is getting three team turnovers. X can get his turnover without even impacting the game. So that will be the approach we take against the Rams today. You know, just playing very aggressive, trying to force turnovers. And the good news is that we are playing against the Los Angeles Rams. They are 0-8. They have not won yet this season. They do not even have Todd Gurley healthy for this game. So this gives us a chance to hopefully attack Jared Goff throughout the game. And we are underway. Winless Los Angeles on the road against the Red Hot Miami Dolphins, whose defense is looking to create havoc. Early on, Darnell Henderson getting back-to-back -back carries. That's the man who seems to be taking over the workload for Gurley. Didn't get too much. Third down and seven. Here's Goff, middle. Oh, ball is so up for grabs. Minka couldn't get it. No one could get it. And Johnny Hecker is out to punt the ball. Yes, we forced the three and out, but we were so close to getting an early first turnover. If we could get one in the first quarter, that'll make me feel a bit better. Man, my heart stopped for just a second. But here we are focusing on the offensive end right now. Of course, we have to figure out how to contain Aaron Donald, keep Josh Rosen protected, which we do on this play. So Rosen can bum it downfield for Jakeem Grant. Your touchdown has been granted pretty early in the going. It took two offensive plays, both of them to grant. The second one just a streak downfield. That's pure speed. And we go up 7-0 early, and hopefully if we can get a nice lead early on against the Rams, we can force Goff into some mistakes. Minka Fitzpatrick is near this football. You have to think if we're going to force three turnovers, at least one of them will involve Minka, but this will be a big play to Gerald Everett. We're going to be playing aggressive defense, and that might mean that we give up some big plays downfield, and that might mean that we do not get the Rams to under 100 yards passing, but... I feel like the turnovers are our best chance at getting X the X Factor. Second down, here is Goff letting it go. And that's an interception. That's Minka Fitzpatrick. That's number one. And Minka following the convoy. And he's off to the races. Henderson, the last line of defense. And he's not going to get him. Minka Fitzpatrick all the way. The Miami Dolphins go up. 13 to 0. We have to wait for the PAT. Interception number four of the season for Minka Fitzpatrick, but his first touchdown of the season. Minka had about four or five pick sixes last year, and yeah, his numbers are a bit down, but he is still Minka Fitzpatrick. He still has universal coverage, and he probably do not want to throw the ball in his area. So that's an early turnover. That makes us feel good. Here is Goff looking to calm things down. Or he's about to make the volcano erupt. This is the rookie, Bryce Hall, who's got a pick six of his own. Oh, no. Oh, no. This game might be getting ugly quickly. 21 to 0. Less than five minutes into the game. And that is two out of three turnovers forced. So we have about 35 minutes of football to try to get this third turnover. If we do not get this, I will be thoroughly disappointed as Jared Goff play action. And thankfully for the Los Angeles Rams' sake, oh, that is going to be a completion. Almost a strip there from Xavier Howard. Oh, make up it's Patrick just unloaded on Henderson. Oh, that is number three. That should be Xavier Howard's X-Factor ability. Five minutes into the game, Darnell Henderson nearly joined Todd Gurley on the injured list for the Rams. He's definitely hurting. Here's Jared. Oh, 
Wait, John Jared. That's Josh Rosen. The other quarterback is Jared. And now here is our Josh Rosen with a somewhat clean pocket that suddenly collapses. Oh, what is Rosen doing? Yikes. I hit the wrong button right there. I meant to throw it to Square, who is kind of in front of us. I was just going to let, I think it was C.D. Lamb do his thing, get a couple of yards, kick the field goal. Instead, we nearly threw an interception. Thankfully, that was not intercepted because it was not my intention is to chuck it downfield. Even though Colin Johnson actually nearly came down with that. Of course, Colin Johnson is coming off of a game where he made probably the most ridiculous catch of the season so far for us. Maybe even better than that C.D. Lamb one-hander against the Chiefs as now Gerald Everett's getting this catch, but that's okay, man. We accomplish our goal we forced three turnovers we should be good here's golf under pressure and minka nearly got his third turnover forced up the first quarter alone if the uh x factor came down to minka fitzpatrick having to make plays by himself he might be able to pull this thing off that was CJ Prosize going the wrong way. Here's a third down and 10. Jared Goff. And look who is there covering the play. Minka Fitzpatrick. This man is unbelievable. <laughs> like, this is all Minka Fitzpatrick right now. Xavier Howard might as well give his game check to Minka Fitzpatrick at this point. Now, the Los Angeles Rams did get a field goal. They made it a 3-24 game. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's make sure we win the game because now that we got the X-Factor in the bag, we got to obviously get the W and try to get to a 7-2 record and make sure the Rams stay winless. As hot as we've been entering this game, it would be a real letdown if we found a way to lose this game. This is Colin Johnson downfield, but a fellow Johnson, Josh Johnson, is able to force the incompletion. This is CD Lamb on the screen and Lamb getting a decent gain nearly gets the first down it's third down and two rosen five wide clean pocket once again down field and that's c d lamb lamb finds the end zone his first touchdown since his first career game against the chiefs c d lamb is making catches we got an x factor Life is good, man. Jakeem Grant got a long downfield touchdown. The only problem is Colin Johnson's not really getting involved, but I mean, that's a very small problem to have. Like, you know, we could be the Los Angeles Rams. Like, <laughs> we could be trying to figure out how to win a game without our superstar running back, Todd Gurley. And of course, you know, we definitely caught a break going against the Rams without Gurley because that impacts both their rushing game and their passing game, especially in Madden, because without Gurley, you know, what is this team? It's you know, Brandon Cooks and Robert Woods and Cooper Cobb trying to get open. And, you know, this Dolphins defense is pretty stout. We're hanging in there. We, besides giving up a couple of big plays, have been doing a pretty decent job so far. Here's the pressure. And the ball is out again. Derek Brown with the sack with the strip. But unfortunately, not the recovery third down in 25, though. This is going to be hard to get out of for Goff. And Goff is intercepted again. Icing on the cake just to make sure. Four is enough for Xavier and Howard. That's number two on the game for the rookie Bryce Hall. And yeah, that's pretty good for Bryce. Oh no! Oh no! Colin Johnson! Don't do him like that! Come on, man! The Rams are 0-8 or 0-9 or whatever they are. Don't kick them while they're down! Colin Johnson is straight up disrespectful on the football field. He's done it again! You cannot single cover this man. Apparently, you can't double cover this man. Like, Colin Johnson, people are saying in the comment section, this man, he, he might be Calvin Johnson. I don't want to make that obvious comparison. The obvious joke is they're both C. Johnson, but I mean, like... Hello? <laughs> you seeing what he's doing out here? We're midway in the second quarter, by the way, and the score is 3-38. to 38. We saw 25 minutes of football to go. That is going to be a 3 now for the Los Angeles Rams, and this game has gotten so ugly to the point where my opponent literally chewed clock on himself right there. Like, he chewed the clock on himself. He's not even thinking about making the comeback. He is completely mentally defeated, so... I mean, I don't know what to do at this point. I guess we'll try to score a touchdown before half. Like, we'll play hard until halftime, and then, you know, maybe we'll chew clock in the second half. Third down and four. I definitely want to try to get this first down. Here comes the blitz from the Rams. And Jared. I got to stop saying Jared. Josh Rosen. Definitely our quarterback, thankfully. And he's able to find C.D. Lamb in the middle of the field. Second down. This is a bubble to Jakeem Grant, who's got some blocks. Jakeem Grant running away. And so is Marcus Peters. That'll allow Grant to score the touchdown. A very awkward play for my opponent. I don't know what this guy is doing at all. All right? Like, period. 
but uh, I'll take the touchdown. Jakeem Grant will definitely take the touchdown. That's his second of the game, and this is, I believe, the third game in a row that Jakeem Grant has had two receiving touchdowns in. So the stretch that Grant has been on since the game where we needed him to get at least 150 yards or three touchdowns to get that X factor, this has been absolutely absurd. Like Jakeem Grant is steadily rising the ranks of, you know, top wide receivers stat wise in this entire league and that's after a week one performance where he only saw the ball i believe twice as you see the rams are chewing the clock on themselves during the two minute drill like, this guy doesn't even care about getting an xp for his players or anything like if this is me at this point right let's just say theoretically we're getting the doors blown off of us right now i'm at least trying to like force the ball to cd lamb and colin johnson and get my rook some touches and get them some xp or something like that this guy like he's He's checked out. He's absolutely checked out. So now that we're up 42 points in the second half, I, I'll just say there's a pretty good chance we are not passing the ball for the rest of this game. This is going to be a true clock fest. Milk and cookies time. Third down and 14. Doesn't even matter. We're still going to run the ball. I mean, you guys get to see Rakeem Boyd. That's the good news. A lot of people actually know Rakeem Boyd, even though he's, you know, our six-round draft pick, 70 overall, third on the depth chart before the Jordan Howard injury. A lot of people know uh, Rakeem Boyd from the Last Chance U. I believe it's on Netflix, so... I mean, people who watch that show are probably going to enjoy the fact that Rakeem Boyd is going to be toting the rock a lot in this second half. Of course, our only other healthy running backs on the roster are Nelson Aguilar and Boston Scott, and... Nelson Aguilar is not going to be seen in the field. So it's just going to be Boyd and Scott and hopefully neither of them get injured or else the fullback is going to have to take some of the touches and we don't want that. So like I said, we're not going to be passing the ball. No matter what, we're not passing this ball right now. The fact that my opponent was chewing clock like midway in the second quarter, like that lets me know like I don't got to worry about a comeback, right? Like, just being real. I accidentally ran an RPO where I like held the ball with Josh Rosen and got sacked right there. I thought if I didn't press a button, it would automatically hand off to the running back. So that was my fault right there. Unfortunately, giving up a sack for no reason, putting Josh Rosen in danger and is a straight up blowout. I would just sub in the back of Khalil Tate or even Ryan Fitzpatrick, but I mean, I don't even care to pause the game. I'm, I do not plan on passing the ball. I did that by accident. Thankfully, it didn't bite us in the butt because last week we did lose Jordan Howard in a blowout. It was like fourth quarter, end of the game. We're literally chewing clock and Jordan Howard broke his collarbone on a draw play. So, you know, we'll just chill out and let Boyd and unfortunately uh, Boston Scott let the two of them take the uh, blows out here for the rest of the game. Man, oh man, you don't want to take those hits from Aaron Donald. Right now we're struggling to run the ball, but that's partially because my opponent knows that I'm running the ball, knows that we are just trying to chew this clock out. So we got Rakeem Boyd with negative one rushing yards. Here's Boston Scott. This is going to be a big play for Scott and Boston Scott off to the races. There he goes almost all the way down one yard short. And this is going to be an absolute vulture for Rakeem Boy. The rookie gets in for a touchdown for the second consecutive week. It is now 3-52. to I said we were not going to pass the ball, but obviously if a touchdown is there running the ball, like what am I supposed to do? We still got... 10 minutes of football to play, man. Shout out to everyone who's still here watching and chilling. You're a real one if you're out here chilling with the Miami Dolphins in this 3-52 game against the Los Angeles Rams. Because there's really not much for us to do out here. Like, we're literally killing clock. Like, me and this guy are trying to finish this game as fast as we possibly can. Now, the one thing that has been very impressive, let me say, is that we are absolutely boxing up this guy's rushing game. Partially because I know this guy's not going to pass the ball. We didn't agree to shoot a clock. I, I wasn't in the chat with this guy or anything like that. We usually use Discord to like schedule games. I wasn't in the Discord with this guy, but I mean, he was just shooting clock. So I was like, all right, I'll join you. Let's get this game over. We'll let Boston Scott tote the rock here. Of course, he had a pretty good game for the Eagles against the Giants. He's having a good game for the Miami Dolphins. He's having a great game for the Dolphins. He nearly broke it off again, but unfortunately, he is denied. And here comes the vulture, Rakeem Boyd, untouched. Well, that's not really a vulture. That's just we bought him, brought him Boyd because... Scott was tired, but Scott did a lot of work on the drive. The poor guy definitely deserves a rushing touchdown at some point, but I'm not sure there are going to be any more touchdowns to be handed because it is 3-59. Like, we're literally trying to shoot clock and we're still scoring touchdowns out here. This is one of the most lopsided victories in NFL history. 
probably in this league even like i don't know you know what records are set in this league but this has to be one of them a 56 point game there's still five and a half minutes to go by the way and of course this is just a far cry from the way we started off the season that feels like light years ago when we could not score more than like 14 points in the first four games now we are on our way to a seven and two record a very impressive five game winning streak and Next week, we are going to be going against the New York Jets, and that's going to be a big game because the Jets were the last team to beat us. Week four, pretty bad loss where, you know, it, it was a close game by the scoreboard, but not really otherwise. Holy cow. Brashad Perriman, look at the score, bro. Three, or, yeah, 359, like, relax. Like, so I'm trying to make top 10 plays of the week out here. We're just trying to chew a clock. And check this out, man. Boston Sky, this should be his touchdown, right? Nope, I gave it up. I gave it up. I just, like, man, I don't, I don't want to rub anybody the wrong way in this CFM, so I, <laughs> I I gave myself up right there. Like, I probably shouldn't have. It's probably not even realistic to give yourself up in that situation. That would have been our third touchdown and running clock situation, man. I was just like, whatever. Like, I, like I said, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to make this guy feel any worse than he already does because, like, the guy gave up midway in the second quarter. Like, I can't imagine how that feels. Like, I'm glad I do not know how that feels to be in this situation in a 10-minute quarter CFM game. So, unfortunately, Boston Scott gets the first down, and that should have allowed Ryan Fitzpatrick to come in and bend the knee a couple of times for the four fourth week in a row. I was looking forward to that. I'm not going to lie. I like subbing in Ryan Fitzpatrick in there, but... Um, Boston Scott fumbled the ball, so <laughs> we end up uh, watching the Rams run in a couple more times, and that will end the game. So we officially move to a 7-2 and two record. Like I said, next week we play against the New York Jets. That'll end a heavy run of games against AFC East opponents. If we lose that game, the AFC East is still wide open, and we completely lose the tiebreaker against the Jets, who will sweep the season series. If we win that game against the New York Jets, then we take full control of the AFC East, winning the division is in our own hands, and potentially getting a first round bye is in our own hands. But if we lose that game, then, you know, all of a sudden we got to worry about like if we even make the playoffs in the first place. So it's a pretty good, pretty big game on the schedule. It's not a make or break game by any means. We can lose that game and still even win the division, depending on what happens to the Jets. As you guys see the stats out here, you guys will notice we have a lot of tackles for losses. In that second half, when my opponent was running the ball, he didn't really do a good job of running the ball. Like, yeah, he had Darnell Henderson, but like, look at these tackles for losses that were racked up. Aaron Donald, of course, had three because he's Aaron Donald. But you see Raquan McMillan, the fantastic rookie Derek Brown got four and a sack, and he also had that forced fumble. Of course, you gotta remember Minka Fitzpatrick's first quarter because that was iconic what Minka Fitzpatrick did out there. That forced fumble to get the third turnover. That was insane. We got the three turnovers in a stretch of about five plays. Like, I wasn't sure we were going to get it. This was our best possible opponent to get that, you know, X-Factor uh, goal for. And we went out there and we killed it, man. So, as you guys are going to see, we go into the text. And, yeah, X is happy. He didn't do squat out there, but... He has a superstar X-Factor. We have our first X-Factor player on the Miami Dolphins, baby. Oh, the rebuild of the Dolphins is going swell right now. 79 overall squad. We have four or five superstars. And now we have the Zonehawk. Xavier Howard. That is his X Factor ability if we can get it going. And of course, having an X Factor means this man's gonna be earning XP more. So hopefully we can progress Xavier Howard more and more. So, yeah, man, I'm taking dubs all over the place out here. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed this. Once again, shout out to everybody who stayed in for this blowout. Subscribe for more Man 20 gameplays, and especially if you guys are keeping up with this CFM. Especially if you are watching this video this late in, you might as well hit the subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching, as always.